T-Man, starring Dennis O'Keefe. There's a guy out in Los Angeles wanted by Uncle Sam, and they told me to go get him. I don't know if this guy's short or tall, fat or thin. I don't know his habits or his pals. Don't even know his name. But I'll bet you my badge I pick him up. Because that's the way Uncle wants it. With Dennis O'Keefe, starred as Agent Dan O'Brien, we bring you another story on the relentless war against crime. Fought by the agents of the Treasury Department. A war in the public interest, fought by T-Men. Tonight, the case of the bleeding gold. What turned out to be the first break in the bleeding gold case came on April 6, 1950 at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But it didn't start in Washington. It started all the way across the country on a dark street in Los Angeles, California. Okay, Prill. We got it. Let's get out of here. Where's Clink? Coming. He got sidetracked back there. He's been warned before about that. Here he comes. Taking candy from a baby. Put the stuff in the back. Okay. Clink, let's see what you've got in your pockets. Huh? Let's get going. Clink, I said let's see what you've got in your pockets. I don't get sore, Prill. Turn out your pockets, Clink. Okay, okay. So I thought so. It's a pretty necklace, Clink. Yeah, that's why I... You know the orders. Gold jewelry. No stones. No diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and no pearls. Stones can be traced. We want gold. Just plain gold. But I thought Put I... Put that necklace back where you found it. Back? In the store. Now. Okay, okay. I'm taking it back. Shut the door, Brownie. Yeah. Gonna leave Clink here? Yes. But he's taking the stuff back. Yes, but for the last time. And that doorway makes a nice frame. A murdered hoodlum in a robbed jewelry store in Los Angeles shouldn't concern the Treasury Department. But the boys in California thought different. They sent the local police report through on the teltype, and the first thing in the morning, the chief had me in his office. What do you make of it, Dan? Hmm. Running down a gold piece. I haven't seen one in a long time. It's not bad, either. Things all right? Feels all right. And what about the engraving? Yeah, it's a little fuzzy in the background, but it's a darn good counterfeit. Now here's the weird thing about it. There's more gold in that coin than in a genuine $20 issue. More gold? Hmm. Where'd you get it? It was found on Clink Spencer. Oh, yeah. Fellow they picked up dead in front of the jewelry store? That's right. Gold jewelry. Counterfeit gold piece. But why? Why go to all that trouble to steal gold and then put more of it in a coin than even the government does? You know something, Chief? I like this. <laughs> I hoped you would, Dan. Because I'm about to lay it right in your lap. No, me and my big mouth. Uh, look, what about the boys in Los Angeles? Well, they're working on it, of course, but... Uh... And I hate to say this to your face. You're the best counterfeit man we've got. So the best for you. Yeah. Thanks for the orchid, Chief. Oh, can I use your tell type? Sure, I'll go with you. Any more of these gold pieces turn out? No, this is the first. We haven't got much to go on. When did we ever have much to go on? Oh, good morning, Mr. O'Brien. Hiya. Is that Los Angeles you're talking to, Mildred? Uh, yes, Chief. Uh, tell him to hold on. Yes, sir. Better address it to Greg, Dan. He's the local man on the case. You know him? Not yet. Oh, they're waiting, Chief. Go ahead, Dan. Okay. Um, Greg from O'Brien, re gold jewelry, thieves, and or counterfeiters. Uh, I'm flying to L.A. end of week. Meet unsavory character. That'll be old me, O'Brien. Pershing Square, make it Saturday noon. Uh, Saturday noon? Yeah. Uh, first bench on left as you enter from 6th Street. You will be reading the New York News. Oh, what? Little Abner is the cue. I guess that ought to do it. Yes, sir. Thanks, Mildred. Oh, uh, a chief. Uh, I'll be with you in a minute. All right, Dan. I'll be in my office. 
Millie, about Saturday, I... Uh, I know, Dan. You don't have to explain. Mm, gee, I hate to break the day. Just be careful, huh? Sure. Sure. And you, too. So long, kid. Chief, I'll need a cover. Uh, could you get, say, Detroit police to send out Los, Los Angeles office a flyer on a guy named oh, Make It Harrigan? Wanted for robbery? You mean you're going to try for an inside job? How else can I find out who's running things? And use a good picture of me for a change, will you? Yeah. You'll know what you're asking for if you play it that way. Yes, I know. But I've got a hunch the only way to break this case is to get inside the mob. Okay, Dan. I'll get out a flyer. Good. And uh, send me another counterfeit gold piece. Oh, I know. I know they don't grow on trees, but get me one somehow. The one they found on the body is too dangerous. Okay. I'll send it to Greg. Well, I'm off to see the wizard. Be seeing you, Chief. Okay, mister, here's Pershing Square, the 6th Street side. Mm, I thought Los Angeles was supposed to be the city of sunshine. Hey, mister, ain't you never heard of the smog? <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, thanks. Oh, thank you. Mind if I sit down? Mm. <clears throat> mm. So you're reading the New York News? Good paper, isn't it? Hmm. How's the Labner doing today? He's in trouble. How are things, O'Brien? Name's Harrigan now. Hood from Detroit. Right. What's the plan? Try to get inside of this thing. Maybe a one-way street. <laughs> I know, Greg. But well, I've got to find out who's at the other end. What can you give me? Nothing that we haven't already sent to Washington. Nothing new? No. Where are you staying? Uh, I checked in the same hotel the dead hoodlum lived in, the uh, Riverside. Mm, good spot. Might pick up something there. Anything for me to know? Detroit police is sending out a flyer with my face on it. When it comes, you might have the local boys drop a few around here and there. One at the hotel might help. Right. How do I reach you, Greg? Hold on, man. Okay. Well, try it anyway. Potter's Drug Store, Alvarado in Maine. Fountain clerks are our men, narcotics detail. Uh -huh. How are you going to contact the gang? I don't know. I was counting on some information from you. <laughs> you kid? Nothing, huh? This is a tight, tough gang. They must have used some of our methods before they opened up, surveillance and so on. They're convinced they got us all spotted. They run for the barn when they see us coming. Oh, you've been a real big help. Pick up the paper when I leave. The new gold coin the chief sent you's in it. Thanks. I have to go now. Stay put and watch your pigeons till I get clear. Happy landing. So I sat there and watched the pigeons. I looked at them and they looked at me. Maybe they thought I was a pigeon, too. That could be right. I watched to see that no one tailed Greg out of the park and thought back over what I knew of the case. A gold coin worth more than its face value and a dead hoodlum named Clink. An alcoholic, the dossier had said. Uh, an alcoholic. If Clink was a booze fighter, he probably had a favorite spot. A hangout, maybe close to the Riverside Hotel. Maybe. I canvassed an area four blocks square around the riverside and found exactly 17 assorted places where a man could get fractured. A real thirsty town. I bought a four-ounce bottle of olive oil, which I downed in a gulp. I figured I needed a base for my operations. And by the time I hit Max's bar and grill, I had flashed a coin enough times to wear it out and could sing Mule Train backwards. And so far, nothing. I couldn't see any grill in Max, so I went up to the bar and into my act again. That'll be 20 cents. Here, uh, here you are. You, hot day. It's only April. Yeah, well, I guess my blood's too thick. I just blew in from Detroit. You don't say. So will you stop playing with that thing? It makes me nervous. Yeah, hey, come on, come on. Have a drink on me. I don't like beer. I'll make it scotch then, but hey, don't take my gold coin. Your what? My coin, see? Yeah. Gold? <laughs> Finest minute. It's my lucky piece. Uh huh. Well, thanks for the drink. He went away and stayed away. I flashed the coin a few more times and left. I pulled my routine in the two remaining bars in the block with the same results. Nello. I'd done everything but roll that coin on the floor. If I didn't get up to bed, I'd be doing just that. With it still in my pocket. As I fought my way up the creaky stairs to my room, I, I thought of the taxpayers and how I never could convince them that this was what they paid me for. All 
I take him from? <laughs> All right, Ronnie. That's enough. That's enough. You don't have to kill him. Okay. Dump him on the bed. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's fine. Uh, there's nothing in the room. Uh, there's a suitcase here. Clothes. A very snappy dresser. Detroit labels. He must be a Detroit boy. Don't beat your brains out, Ronnie. Now, let's help him off with his coat. Yeah. Yes, there's a Detroit label in it, too. Taylor's name and his name. Uh, his name's Hogan or Hagen. Hagen. But... Don't you know how to read? Hold him, Brownie, before he gets ideas. Uh, 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 hey, let go. Just let rest go. easily, my friend. Stop it! What do you guys want? Where did you get this coin? My grandmother left it to me in a will. I don't care for that answer. Where did you get it? My grandmother. Oh. Why were you flashing that coin around? Okay. Okay, I'll make conversation. The reason I showed the coin was maybe because I'm anxious to get in touch with a guy who knows how to make them. Anxious, huh? Why? Engraving on that one stinks. So? I'm peddling a die. Yeah? That treasure itself couldn't spot it as a phony. The die you've got is that good while you're looking for company? I've got to get the gold. A trail? Yes. This could be a tea man trick, a stakeout. I got a patent on stakeouts. I have doubts about you, mister. <coughs> Let's not take no chances on this guy, Prayer. Do I look like a treasury rat to you? I lived with a guy once for three months, and then he puts the arm on me. All the time, he was a tea man. You could be right, Brownie, but... Get behind the door, Brownie. Answer him. Who's there? Pasquale, dead clerk. All right, open the door, Harrigan. And remember, we can see every move. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> there was a cop downstairs just now. I don't say. What about him? He was looking for a man named Harrigan. There you go. <laughs> My name's Johnson. You know that. I signed the register. You... This cop, he shows me this official paper with your picture on it. Wants to know if you're here. Let me see. I said nothing, senor. <laughs> of course, he may be back. Uh, perhaps, um... Ah, uh, no, okay. Here's a ten. Now get out of here and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Pleasure, senor. Pleasure. Here, let me see that. A uh, wanted flyer. Ah, uh, it's got baby's name and picture on it, all right. The Detroit police would like to get in touch with baby. What's the beef, Prim? Armed robbery, jailbreak. Now maybe we can stop going around in circles and get down to business, Mr. Prell. Yes, perhaps we can. Be outside the hotel at 7 tonight if you really have something to sell. Come on, Brownie. I'll be there. Goodbye, Mr. Harrigan. Los Angeles calling, Chief. Mr. Gregg. Okay. Go ahead, Greg. O'Brien contacted me through the drugstore, Chief. Needs a set of dyes, good ones. Dyes? What for? I don't know. He's got some idea or other. Wants them fast. Twenty dollar gold? Yes, sir. Also, a counterfeit coin made from those dyes. The best set we've got are those made by Anton Bauman. Bauman's been in jail for ten years. Should be safe enough. You'll get him to O'Brien? Right, but rush him, Chief. You'll have him in the morning. What's the setup? He's made contact with a couple of hoods named Prail and Brownie. Mm-hmm. Claimed he's got a perfect set of dyes, so they're taking him to meet the higher-ups tonight. I see. He'll have to stall him till he gets the dyes. Where he goes from there is anybody's guess. Just after seven that night, I was going up a flight of stairs in a down-at-the-heel building on Spring Street. Frail and Brownie flanking me. We stopped at the door marked R. Venice, broker. The office wouldn't have fooled anybody. The blonde at the desk would. Good evening. Well, hello. Carla, is Mr. Venice in? He's on the telephone. Be through in a minute. Hey, you boys get a nice layout here. I feel that. Count in the secretary. Sit down, Harrigan. Thanks. Oh, say, don't you think you want to speak to your cleaning woman? The chair's a little dusty. <laughs> I've been meaning to take care of that. Mm-hmm. At the same time, you might tear a couple of sheets off your calendar. It's April, sweetheart, not February. Some clown. Think it'll be two more months before you use this office again? I'll tell Mr. Venice you're here. 
You talk a lot, Harrigan. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Harrigan's here with Mr. Crail and Mr. Brown. Thank you, Carla. Come in, come in, boys. Well, you can stay too, Carla. Oh, uh, after you, Mr. Crail. And, uh, Mr. Brown. Some club. Uh, sit down, boys. Make yourselves comfortable. All right. Well, now, we don't have to stand on any ceremony, do we, Harrigan? Have a look at that gold piece, Prale. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Not one of ours, but lovely. Fine piece of work. Oh, that gold piece is just experimental. I got a set of dies that'll beat that one four ways from Sunday. Well, now, Harrigan, are we just supposed to take your word that your dies are good? Uh, the Treasury Department itself couldn't spot them. If they're that good, why not use them yourself? <laughs> He's got a point, Harrigan. Well, why do you want to sell a set of dies is one thing. Getting the gold to put into them is something else again. And uh, when do we see the set of dies? When I see the gold. Uh, what happens if when we see them, we don't like them? Well, I'll have to look someplace else for the gold. Oh. Uh, Paul Miller will have to okay them first. Miller? No, our technician. He's a hard man to please. Well, okay. Well, where do I find this, Miller? Mr. Prale will attend to that. However, for your own sake, Harrigan, I trust those dies of yours are as good as you say they are. There's only one thing wrong with them, Mr. Venice. Oh? They're hungry. For gold. Oh. <laughs> and speaking of hunger, I've got a date for dinner. Huh? Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you out, Mr. Harry. Thanks. Look, Venice, I don't see Now, that, uh, that date I have for dinner, with myself. Oh, I could get a reservation for one more. <laughs> I work here, remember? And since the cleaning woman doesn't come in on Saturdays... I have a lot of dust in the do. Oh, it's a shame. A beautiful girl like you has to do all the dirty work. <laughs> yes, isn't it? Maybe some other time, huh? Could be, Mr. Harrigan. Could be. I had to shake my head to clear Carla out of my mind. This was no time to mouse around with a beautiful blonde. I caught a taxi and cruised around the block a couple of times to make sure I wasn't followed. Then had him drop me at the Potter drugstore. I ordered coffee, and when the clerk brought it, he mopped up the counter with a bar towel. When he lifted the towel, a small package was beside my hand. The chief had them flown out. Those dyes were made by Anton Bauman. They're the best dyes ever captured by the department. Any luck so far? I've met a mug, a college graduate, a super salesman, and a beautiful girl. Maybe they'll lead me to the boss. I'll pass the sugar, will you? Sure. Thanks. Oh, by the way, they, they've got a fake office at uh, 72 Spring Street. 72 Spring Street. Got it. And uh, tell Greg to get me all he can on a Paul Miller. He's an engraver. Paul Miller? Yeah, I'm seeing him today. These dyes have to meet with his approval, whatever that means. Greg would like you to report here once a day, if you can. Mm, so would I. But if I don't, you better order a new boy and flowers. So this is where we meet the famous Miller. In the same tire, dusty office of one R. Venice broker. That's right. Miller, this is Harrigan. Uh, come in, come in, all of you. Uh, Brownie, stay there by the door. Hale, uh, you and Harrigan come over to the window. Now, Mr. Harrigan, the dies, if you please. I'm sorry, Mr. Miller, I didn't bring them with me. Then what are you doing here? I told Venice and all of you that you can see the dies when I see the gold. If I know you people have the metal, maybe we can go into business together. In the meantime, here's a sample. <laughs> Lead. I know, but look at the engraving. Mm hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. Whoever did this was very good, Harrigan. But don't you know that the Secret Service has a file on every engraver in the United States? That's what makes this so good. The man who did this isn't in the files. He's a refugee, a Hungarian named Harthy in this country illegally. How did you get to him? Uh, well, I was, uh, I was overseas a couple, three years ago. Met him then. So you were abroad? Why did you tell me this, Prelude? He didn't tell me he was overseas. What does it matter to you if I was in Europe? Never mind, never mind. I'm satisfied with this engraving, Harrigan. But I'll have to see the dies before the boss will come to any turn. Uh, Brownie, you stay here and wait for Mr. Venders and Carla. And Prale, you stick with Harrigan and make sure he delivers the dies to us on the yacht tonight. Okay, Miller. Come on, Harrigan. Real smart boy, Miller. Yes. Now, let me see. I bring the dies to, uh, to, uh, a boat somewhere? We bring the dies. Ah. Oh. Prell. Yes. How am I going to get the dies with you hanging on to me all the time? What? Answer, I can't. So? So? Um... Come 
on, come on, answer. Treasury Department. Let me speak to Greg, quick. Mr. Greg, just a moment, please. Come on, come on. Greg. Greg, this is O'Brien. I haven't got much time. You shouldn't be taking a chance like this using the telephone. I know, I know. Now, get this fast. I'm in the lobby of the Riverside Hotel, and I've got one of the dies in my pocket. Yeah. The other face is upstairs in my room, taped to the bottom of the washbowl. Get it? Right. I'm on my way back now to that Spring Street office. I walked out on them, so the reception's liable to be hot. Uh-huh. If I can work it, we'll all be heading for the waterfront, a yacht somewhere or other, within an hour. Okay. I haven't got a gun, but I'll try and draw a shot if I can, if I can flush the boss. And you have the Harbor Patrol cover every yacht basin. On the shot, they move in. You're an idiot, Prale. Look, Mr. Venice, everybody had a look at him, passed on him. How was I going to know he was planning to hang one on me? He must be a tea man. We're in trouble. Even if he is a tea man, he's got nothing on us. Why worry? No, he got close. Can't Prale take care of that? Yes, yes. Prale, find this Harrigan. He won't have far to look. Huh? Harrigan. What's all the excitement about? Why did you slug Prale and duck out? Well, I didn't want him to know where I kept the other die. The other die? Yeah, the other die. I brought only the face die, not the back. Why? My name's not Santa Claus, Mr. Venice. I'm holding on to the other die for insurance. Miller ought to be able to okay the deal with one of the dies in his hand. The other one I keep. Till when? Till I see the boss and make a deal. Look, I'm the boss. No, 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 no. You're too much out in the open. Besides, you take orders. I told you... Mr. Venice. Yes? Miller liked the sample. Let's show Miller the die. Then let Harrigan meet the boss. Yeah, maybe you're right. Miller mentioned the yacht. Yes, he's down there now. And the boss should be there, too. Then I suppose we all go to the yacht. Just as soon as it gets dark. I've got Mr. Carlson now, Mr. Gregg. Thanks. Hello, Chief. Yes, Greg. Chief, I've got news. O'Brien got the dies and is meeting the head of the ring tonight aboard a yacht somewhere. Good work. But I've got news for you. The department had a time tracking Miller. No federal record. They finally dug up something in a small town down south. Local indictment. But get this. Miller worked with Bauman. Miller and Bauman? Then that means... That means he'd spot O'Brien's die immediately as a Bauman job. Get in touch with O'Brien. He's got to leave Los Angeles right away. He's got to break off contact with the gang. Right, Chief. I'll get right on it. Yeah. Smith, take two cars and head for San Pedro Waterfront. O'Brien's walking into a trap. If I can't contact him at his hotel, it means he's heading for the beach with that crew right now. If you hear any shooting, head for it. I'm going to try to find O'Brien and stop him before it's too late. Big happy family. Shut up, Harrigan. Now, oh, what's everybody so nervous about? Going to meet the boss? Harrigan, don't talk so much. Mr. Venice. Yes, Prale? We're being tailed. Huh? You sure? Yes. Fellow on a dock said that. Uh, I don't like that. Don't worry. Brownie and I can take care of him. Nobody around these waterfront streets at this hour. Brownie, I'm going to swing the car across the street and block it. Right, Prale. Get your door open. As soon as I swing around, you'll jump out of the car. So you'll be ready for the guy trailing us. You'll have to jam his brakes and he'll have his eyes on the road. I got it. Okay. Here goes. All right, Brownie, move. Right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't be sure you... I don't have to be sure. You're crazy. I got him. Good work, Brownie. Now let's get out of here fast. Guy didn't even know what hit him. And you know who he was? Local boy, Mr. Venice. Hangs around a treasury office. A tea man. Right then, I stopped enjoying the ride. Greg had been a good man. He died in the public service. A nice epitaph, but I'd make it up for him. I'd make it up. Rail, you and Brownie stay here at the end of the pier and keep a sharp lookout. Harrigan and I are going aboard. Come on, Carlo. Right. Quite a hunky yard. It's my place for a coining lad. Do I, uh, I get to see the boss when I get aboard? You'll see him when it's time. Oh, pardon me. I got carried away. <laughs> okay. Up on deck, Harrigan. All right. Now give me the die. I thought Miller was going to look at it. He's down below. I'll take it to him. You'd better hurry, Mr. Venice. The boss doesn't like this kind of a setup. It'll only take Miller two minutes under a microscope. I'll bring him back with me if there's anything wrong. You know, Harrigan... If those dyes are good, we might talk some more about that dinner date. I was beginning to get it. It was a neat setup. A yacht they could move around while they worked. Gold coins, 
against the law here, but not overseas. Say, in Europe. The black market, maybe. Sure, sure, that was it. They'd pay a dozen times the face value to get their hands on gold coins issued by the United States. And they got their gold from the jewelry stores, the cheap way. Minted the stuff aboard this tub and meant their foreign contacts at sea. It all figured. Harrigan. Hmm? Harrigan, you're a bright boy. You might all get along real well. Hmm. Especially you and me, huh? Yeah. Miller has finished it... his examination. He said he'd be right up. Oh, good. I'd like to get this deal set. The uh, young lady here and I are building some plans. It's sound real. Miller! Miller, what's that? Miller, what's that gun for? The dice. The dice Harrigan gave us. Huh? They were made by Bauman. Oh, now, wait a minute. I know these dice like the back of my hand. I was with Bauman when he made them. <laughs> and Bauman's been in jail for years. Kettle jail. All his engraved dice were taken with him. That means... Harrigan's a tea man. That a plan. Shoot, Miller. Shoot, shoot. Oh, no. What? This gun is not for Harrigan. Venice told me about killing the tea man when he brought down the die. I've always told you I don't like killing. I've always told don't you... Don't be a fool, Miller. You're in this as deep as we are. For counterfeiting, yes, but not for murder. I'm leaving. And Harrigan's going with me. That's playing a smart Miller. Miller, i Stand I'll... still! Harrigan, follow me. Why? There's a dinghy tied at the boat. Easy. Trail! Brownie, it's a fight! Come on! <laughs> I didn't mean to shoot Venice. Let me have that gun, Miller. I didn't mean it. Take me with you. Oh, it's Prell. Brownie. Come on. Come on behind the bridge. Hey. Now, I'll keep down. Arrogant. We know you're there. Come on out. And we'll talk. You want me? Come and get me. Prell, look. It's a cops. Arrogant, you double-crossing rat. Prell, let's get out of here. It's too late, Prell. Throw your gun overboard and give up. I'll get you first, Harrigan. All right. This one's for Greg, Prell. Over here. Here. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got here at just the right time. Well, thanks to Greg, poor guy. Before they got him, he told us you'd be aboard a yacht down here. We moved as soon as we could locate the shot. Good work, you had. You, uh, you didn't hit the girl, too, did you? Girl? I didn't see any girl. Tell him about me, Harrigan. You'll tell him about me, won't you? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell him about you, Mother. We take this guy, too? Yeah. But uh, let, okay. uh, let me explain. But what was this about a girl? Uh, she must be down in the cabin. You wait for me. <laughs> Hello, Carla. You all right? Oh, Mr. Harrigan. I was so scared. All that shooting and... and all that. <laughs> you can cut the act now, Carla. What... what do you mean? Oh, I've had a hunch about you all along. No one made a move till you gave the nod. And then when Miller called your name when he spotted that die, I cinched it. Look, Harrigan. Oh, I have to hand it to you, Carla. You're smart. You ran that mob with a glove of velvet, boss. <laughs> with the officer and his men, and as I walked along the now deserted pier, I suddenly thought of an exotic flower I'd once seen in the tropics. A parasitic flower that thrived on death and decay. Beautiful, but rotten clear through. Well, geraniums mean, may not be as pretty, but thank gosh there's a heck of a lot more of them. Man, starring Dennis O'Keefe, is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, with special music composed and conducted by Richard Orant. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 